Today we answer an important question. Is that your card <laughs> on Film Threat Reviews? <laughs> I'm Alan Ng, I was Zarna Kit, and today we review Derek Delgado's In and of Itself. It's a one-man play, it's on Hulu. Um, it's the story of a man fighting to see through the illusion of his own identity, only to discover that identity itself is an illusion. It's directed by Frank Oz, stars Derek Delgadio. Uh, again, this is his one-man play. So just to set it up a little bit, uh, it's a play that ran for over 500 uh, performances in New York. Uh, and the, the main conceit of it is when you walk into the theater, you'll see uh, on the wall a bunch of uh, cards that says, I am, and then something else. I am, uh, let's see, what do I have here? I am a unicorn, I am a reflection, I am a journalist. And there's hundreds of them, and everyone's supposed to go find a card that represents them and take it to their seat. Or actually, fold it in half, take, uh, leave the label on a giant pile. And then throughout the show, he kind of addresses uh, this giant stack of identity, so to speak. And, and I should also mention about um, a half an hour into the show, that's when I realized that this was a magic show. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm curious what you thought about. Uh, well, I, I would call this so much a play. It's he, he's almost like this, um, like illusionist, right? He, I think he probably aligns himself more with like, you know, the David Copperfield, David Blaine kind of stuff. I mean, he's amazing. He's like somewhere in between there. I mean, he's not the big illusions like David Copperfield. Yeah, and it's not. He's somewhat kind of like the hustler that that David Blaine might be, but uh, but it's a very dramatic. Uh, uh, magic show so to speak and and i think it's very interactive as well it's it's very different it, i wouldn't you know I, I think i'm degrading it by calling it a magic show yeah um it it is it does have a very small audience i think i think the rule was no more than 100 people because this was designed to be one of those intimate performances where the audience is definitely a participant he brings people up on stage or he goes down into them talks to them picks people out assigns tasks to certain people uh like like having someone leave early and have to come back the next day to the show or follow up so uh well let's let's talk about that for a second they they have to leave early and then they have to take the information they got from the show up until that point and write what they think the ending of the play is. And so they have a, they have a written assignment to do yeah, yes, uh, before exactly. they come back the next day. Yes, so you see that he's so much more than a performance artist, so much more than a than an illusionist. There's almost like, um, it's, there's two weird, weirdly, uh, like a therapy session almost where you're peeling yeah. back layers of what it means to be you. Who are you? How do you define yourself? How do you define your actions? How do others define you? Um, and so there, it turns into this, these lessons all based around how the narrator is unreliable because how you saw that performance is different how I saw that performance and which one is the reliable version. Whose version do you trust and believe? We are all, it's all about, we're all unreliable narrators, even in our own lives and in each other's lives. Yeah, um, I think that's the whole point is the fact that when you meet someone, you immediately begin assigning labels to them. Yes. Um, and then you start judging who they are and what they will do based on those labels. And the reality is, is that, uh, you know, you don't know all the information about that person. Yeah. And, and to some degree, the information you know about yourself is unreliable. And, and, the, and once you grab onto a label like that, you start believing you are that label. Yes. And that there, there are a lot of dangers in grasping onto the wrong label and how that could even alter you. Um, I... It's an hour and a half um, because there's a lot, a lot of parts to this. We learn a lot about his own childhood. We learned about the cards. We learn about other people. I found myself needing to take uh, breaks. I think it did a good job. You need an intermission, basically. Yeah, I needed my intermission. I'm, I mean, it's directed by Frank Oz, who actually directed the the stage version as well. Oh, okay. um, by uh, Stephen Colbert and his wife. So there's there's a lot of pedigree behind this, and for good reason. It is a very interesting self exploration. But uh, for me, an hour and a half of that. 
I mean, therapy sessions are what, 50 to 60 minutes <laughs> when you're paying someone? Yeah. So this is, this is 90 minutes, which to me, it felt a little long. Not that like I wanted to stop watching it. I just needed to pause watching it. Also, I imagine that uh, there's a, uh, as much as I was intrigued by this, I imagine there was so, certain layers that were lost because I think it's more impactful when you're literally there in person, but mm -hmm. they did their best to make it accessible to the Hulu audience where this is airing. Yeah. And I also feel like, hey, listen, we're in a pandemic. We don't know when Broadway will reopen. It'll be a while yet. So in the meantime, to be able to have a front row seat at home to something like this, knowing that we will not be able to see the in-person version anytime soon, it's good enough for me. That's yeah. I'll, I'll take that. I bring up the magic part. There's there is magic in there. He does um, some card manipulation, which um, I've dabbled in magic. I've uh, gone to a lot of magic shows. I've seen a lot of that, um, you know. And then there's there's this uh, thing at the end that uh, it's you have to just kind of see it to believe it. But you know, th it involves a little bit of psychology and mentalism, which is also equally amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there's this interactive part he does with the audience, the, the going out with the book. Um, there's also a point where he grabs people write letters to to him, the show at the theater, and he grabs them and has people read them to themselves, uh, you know, as if their father had written to it or a best friend had written it. And just to watch that reaction, the, I've mentioned all this because it's a very it's a very emotional uh, show. And it's not just the fact that, you know, he comes off really as a, at times I, I look, the look on his face, he comes across as incredibly tortured, emotionally <laughs> tortured, uh, yeah. which, which kind of lends to the, wow, an hour and a half of this emotionally tortured guy. But you realize there is a point to it. And, and, and in the end, you know, I, I did appreciate this message of this idea that we have all these labels, but the reality, the only real label that, that matters to all of us is the label of being of human being. Because once you start labeling people, that's when you start judging them. And, you know, these last last decade or so of, of politics has been all that. You know, um, my problem with social media is that, you know, you only have, what, 256 characters to say something. And the only way to sum things up is by issuing labels to people you admire or people you you dislike. And uh, and it becomes this lazy shortcut to just dismiss or accept a person based on the label you give them, yeah. uh, rather than understanding the person and their journey together. One of the things that I thought uh, a directing choice by Frank Oz that was that I thought was very interesting was um, he. It's clear that this show was filmed over several performances, if not all 500 of them. Because when he calls somebody down onto the stage, um, you see that person going down onto the stage, but then you'll see different, you'll see that cut yeah. repeated with different people implying that this is the, the, the same show multiple times. It's the same, the, it, like this is part of It's not of set up. There, there's no, there, there's a truly random aspect to yes. uh, the important elements of the show. Yes, and and not only that, but that he is not a a one hit wonder. Like, oh, it just happened on one night. Like, it, it to be able to watch all these different people read letters, even though in each performance it's only one one person from the crowd that le reads one letter. Here, we must have seen like a dozen that that mm -hmm. were spliced through from a dozen different shows. Then you you see that this. This is not, he's not a one hit wonder. This is something that he is good at. There's there, there's a talent that he has, whether it's co coincidental 12 times or he's a master manipulator 12 times or he's got something special. He's some type of an angel in disguise 12 times. Like it's, it's, it's not random. It's, there is something there and it works every single time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the, that's the beauty of this is that you know, uh, the he says it at the end. It's it's uh, he's basically playing Russian roulette at each performance. Yeah, uh, because he he, you know, he's he's out there and he's exposed and he could he could fail at any moment. Yes, uh, yeah. I should I should loop back. You mentioned Frank Oz. I was reading the Hulu bio, and we talk about labels. And so this is how they describe Frank Oz: uh, okay. director of a dozen movies, Yoda performer, and the Muppets. <laughs> That's how they sum up Frank Oz's uh, career. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, to me, he's the Muppets, right? If I'm going to put a label on Frank Oz, be yeah. like, oh yeah, it's, it's the Muppet Man. But um, but that's but that's again, I'm the I, I'm an unreliable narrator, which is the whole point because a Star Wars fan would say that he's like the Yoda, or a movie buff will point out all the movies that he's directed. So yeah. again, we go back to it's there's the the narrator is always unreliable. Yeah. Then the last thing I'll men mention is, you know, Frank Oz doing this play. Um, you know, David Mamet wrote a play or did a play with Ricky Jay, and that was a magic show as well. And it's just, uh, it, it's a different show, but it's it's just amazing that you get these people to, uh, these great artists, uh, theatrical artists to come in and uh, do your magic show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, okay. So, uh, you know, I... I think you you liked it. You got it. I, I'm not sure you were incredibly enthusiastic, but I mean, I mean, the length got to you. But yeah, yeah. I think uh, I'm I'm willing. I'm thinking you got the points he was trying to make and the impact of each segment. So uh, seven and a half. Seven and a half, right on. I I thought it was it was great. I I needed those pauses, and I I wish <laughs> I wish it was a little shorter so that I would have watched it all in one, but. No, not a problem. Still, I think it's still worthy uh, of one's time. And the benefit of it being on Hulu is, is that you can you can make that pause. Yeah. In fact, I just saw it a second time before before oh. recording this, just because I wanted to see it again. Yeah. And how and how? So at least you know the minimum score I'm going to give it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but wait, how how did you like it on second viewing? Because I was thinking to myself that I I'm assuming that on second viewing I would get something different. Well, I think uh, to me, I saw it a second time mostly because I wanted, there were things that he says and does in the first half that, you know, when when the play first starts, you're somewhat disoriented as to what he's doing. Yes. And then when you go back and you understand the the entire through line of it, yeah. then you start to grab a lot of the meaning of the first half of that, of the show that you kind of glossed over and didn't really think about until, um, until it, like, like the brick thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand the brick thing until the credits, and then when you go back to the go back to the brick section, uh, it makes a whole lot of sense, especially with what he says and how he sets it up. Got it. Well, I would think you gave it eight and a half because you you went back for a second viewing. Yeah, I definitely I gave it an eight. Okay. I mean, that's that's still pretty good. Um, there's there's this thing about uh, doing basically filming a Broadway show. Um, you know, most of the work's already done. And so as a film, you know, they had, he, he had 550 rehearsals to get this, <laughs> this performance down. And it's like, well, how are you going to screw it up? And so it's good. I, that's why, that's what keeps it from going into great territory, which yeah. is kind of yeah. how I felt about Hamilton as well. It's like, yeah. well, it's brilliant, but you know, as a movie, you know, <laughs> they just shot the camera in the right, right, <laughs> right position. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. they sounded and they got the sound right. Yeah. Okay, so with that, hey, so uh, Derek Delgado's uh, In and of Itself is on Hulu. Uh, it's on Hulu now. Go check it out. It's very interesting, and you've got to kind of sit down and kind of, you know, have no distractions and just mm. just let it overwhelm you. That's, that's yeah. how I, I would say watch it. So with that, let's get out of here. <laughs> 